Okay, so in my second speech, it's more of a story. I'm going to tell you about my family's experience of kidney failure, dialysis, and kidney transplantation. Okay, and I'll begin now. So my brother Ed was born with a disorder that affects the kidneys called nephronophysis. It's characterized by inflammation and scarring that impairs kidney function. Among other symptoms, affected individuals develop fluid-filled cysts on their kidneys. Nephronophysis eventually leads to end-stage renal disease, which is the ESRD that we saw in the last speech. A life-threatening failure of kidney function that occurs when the kidneys are no longer able to filter fluids and waste products from the body effectively. Nephronothysis can be classified by the approximate age at which ESRD, so that's the end-stage renal disease, begins. For my brother, this occurred when he was 15, so his disease is classified as juvenile nephronothysis. After his kidneys failed, he was put on peritoneal dialysis for about a year, which is a treatment for kidney failure that uses the lining of your abdomen the peritoneum, to filter the blood inside your body. A few weeks before you start peritoneal dialysis, a surgeon places a catheter in your belly. When you start treatment, dialysis solution, which is almost like a mixture of water with salt and other additives, flows from a bag through the catheter into your stomach. While the dialysis solution is inside your stomach, it absorbs waste and extra fluid from the body. I remember it was quite an unpleasant treatment for my brother. He had to be connected to the machine for eight and then 10 hours at night, which meant his evening activities were massively restricted at the age of 15, as you can imagine. And my parents were responsible for setting it all up. So they had to learn how to surgically scrub their hands to avoid any infections. It was a constant worry for them. The machine would alarm fairly regularly if he slept on the tube, for example, which would then wake the entire household. It also didn't really work. Apparently his peritoneum is quite sensitive and they had to increase the glucose and the solution and the number of hours he was on the machine. On the 17th of June, 1998, when he was 16 years old, our father donated one of his kidneys. So my dad became a living organ donor and the transplant was classed as an early transplant. That kidney lasted until just before my brother's 21st birthday, so around four and a half years. The donated kidney was then rejected. And this could have been a mixture of perhaps a lack of compliance with the immunosuppressant drugs, which have to be taken religiously at a certain time of day. But Regardless of what happened, um, it was still an amazing gift. My brother finally grew properly. He's almost as tall as me and he developed into a young man. And it may well have happened anyway. There are no guarantees with kidney transplantation, even when everything looks great on paper. For example, my brother's friend received a kidney donation from his mother and it never worked. His body rejected it immediately. And sadly, sometimes that happens. For my brother, life took a turn for the worse after the donated kidney failed, as he began what would end up being 11 years on hemodialysis. And during hemodialysis, your blood goes through the filter, which is called a dialyzer outside of your body. The dialyzer is sometimes referred to as an artificial kidney, which is perhaps easier to remember. At the start of a hemodialysis treatment, a dialysis nurse or technician places two needles into your arm. However, sometimes patients prefer to put their own needles in after they've been trained by a healthcare team. And this was my brother's case. Each needle is attached to a soft tube, which is then connected to the dialysis machine. The dialysis machine pumps the blood through the filter and returns the blood to your body. During the process, the dialysis machine checks your blood pressure and controls how quickly blood flows through the filter and how quickly fluid is removed from your body. Hemodialysis can help you feel better and live longer, but it's not a cure for kidney failure. 
This blood filtering technique remains constraining as the patient must be dialyzed over a period of four hours, three times a week. Similarly, patients must limit their intake of liquid at all times, which leads to patients feeling dehydrated, with some describing feeling miserable, like they're running on empty, or like they have a constant hangover at all times. Other common problems that can result from hemodialysis include painful muscle cramps from removing too much fluid too quickly, high blood pressure, which can cause headaches or, in rare cases, a stroke, low blood pressure, which can make you faint, feel sick to your stomach, or be more likely to fall, high phosphate levels, which can weaken bones and make your skin itch. The psychological toll is also considerable. My brother always worked full time, so he had to fit dialysis around his work, which meant going to the renal unit straight from work until midnight three times a week. He also spent 11 years waiting for a phone call to say that a match had been found. And when the phone call finally came, 11 years on, at the crack of dawn on a Saturday morning, he almost missed it. My brother's wait was longer than most. In many European countries, there are waiting times of three to five years. However, there are certain requirements for a kidney donor to be a match for a transplant. The patient and his or her donor must have the following, the same tissue type. Now, aside from identical twins, no two people have the exact same tissue type, though a match is considered the same if tissues match 12 certain protein markers. They must also have compat compatible blood types. So certain blood types are compatible, meaning their antibodies won't attack each other. And just as a reminder, an antibody is a blood protein formed when the body recognises another substance is harmful. They must also have a negative serum cross-match test. And this is a series of, series of blood tests that look at the reaction between the kidney donors and the transplant recipient's blood or organs. Negative test results means there are no antibodies from the recipient's blood that would destroy the donor's blood. Unfortunately, my brother had too many antibodies, which would have led to the donated kidney being rejected. And this meant that his wait was very long. I recently read that the average life expectancy for those on dialysis is 15 years. So I now realize that my brother was getting very close to that limit. I'm very happy to say that my brother had a successful second transplant almost nine years ago in August, 2015. My brother is a truly, in, a truly an inspiration to all of us in the family. He's an amazing human being. And the way he stoically faced dialysis over the years and how he never lost hope is really a source of inspiration. Even when he lost his friends, he lost his ex-girlfriend and more recently, his best friend who died last September. Since his transplant, my brother's moved to Ireland to live. He cycled along the west coast of Ireland He's gone camping. He traveled with friends and visited family in Europe without needing any treatment. He's volunteered as a sports commentator for the visually impaired. He's drunk many pints of beer. He's performed on the stage. He volunteered with the Dublin Fringe Festival. He can go to the cinema any night of the week and he's not worried about the food that he eats. In short, he's been enjoying his life. When I mentioned to him and asked for his blessing to tell his story, um, he sent me this message and I'd like to end my speech with it today. And I quote, receiving a transplant is the gift of life for living on dialysis is just surviving. To receive a call saying someone in the last throes of life was thinking of helping a complete stranger to give them a second chance at life is a selfless act of generosity. And anyone who receives such a gift never forgets that. It is a real chance to strive for and live as best a life you can, whilst you can, as a mark of honour to that generous person. End of quote. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>